They're asleep. They can't read it. And that's what we'll, we'll jump into that a little bit tonight, but uh, we'll get on the, the more of the spiritual end of things. Amen. Okay, and, and what does God have for us in this chapter? What has he got for us? That's what we need to realize. What is, what is God saying to me? Everybody's worried about what he's saying to Israel. What is he saying to me? Right. Israel already got already had their problems. I'm reading the book today. Amen. I'm getting preached at today. I want to take something away, don't you? Amen. 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 So let's get into our Bible reading. And, uh, and the Bible says in 29, it says, uh, Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt. And ye, year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Yet I will distress Ariel. And there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. And I will camp against thee round about, and will lay siege against thee with a mount, and I will raise forts against thee. And thou shalt be broke, brought down, and shalt speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit out of the out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, and, a, and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chafe that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant suddenly. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Father, bless thy word tonight. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, uh, last chapter we talked about people don't want to hear, want to make up their own things themselves. They want to make a covenant with death. Uh, what's the biggest covenant you've heard about with death? Uh, around here it's probably purgatory. They made a covenant with death. Uh, we go to purgatory. Hey, look, there are probably some people that think when they die, that when they start going down there and they're held down there, they're going to think maybe, oh, well, maybe at first they're going to say, well, I guess I, I've been purgatory. There may be. It's a it's a covenant with death. And uh, that's what he, he, he's bringing up. There's a, some people have a covenant. They think that's going to do it, but they haven't read because the Bible says, it says it's a, a point on the man wants to die. And after this, what happens? The judgment. The judgment happens that. You know, you know how God satisfies the, uh, all these things. He He makes a plumb line, puts it down. He says, "What side of the plumb line are you on?" Yeah. Right? It, and the plumb line comes down, only goes to one place. There's only one way. It's coming down from heaven. A plumb line comes down from the top to the bottom, and it, and and it, and God's looking at. It, he says, "That's it. That's the plumb line. What's that? What side of the plumb line are you on?" Amen. So now He says a word here. He says. Woe well, to Ariel. Now, Ariel, A-R, lion, L, God, God's lion. It's another word for Israel, Ariel. Look what it says, Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Where David dwelt? He dwelt in Jerusalem. Amen? Okay? Uh, the city of David, Zion. Okay? And, uh, and what God's looking at here, here he says, um, he says, woe well, to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt, and ye year to year, let the, let them kill uh, the sacrifices. Okay? Um, the Jews were not keeping the Sabbath. It, remember when it finally happened, they were kicked out? How many years was it? For how long? 70 years. Why? Because from Saul to Zedekiah, you had 490 years. All the sections of the Bible are divided by years. Well, how many years? 490. Go to Daniel, he even tells you the 490. Okay, it's all in sections of 490 in your Bible. So in the 490 years from Saul to Zedekiah, every seventh year they're supposed to have what? A sabbatical year where they don't bring in their fruits. They let the land rest for a year. It's a hedge against inflation. Amen? Hey, why not get a restful year? Right? Uh, let's go to uh, go over to Leviticus chapter 25. Le 
Leviticus 25, verse number 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord six years. Thou shalt sow thy field, in six years thou shalt prune thy vineyards, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall but in the seventh year shall shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. So there's the commandment, and how many times do you think they did that commandment? Absolutely none. Uh, even to the point where, uh, even if they were to try, even the tribe of Dan had never been anything but rebellious. Throughout all its time. They were already in idolatry by this time. You see, they weren't keeping these Sabbaths. And uh, what I'm looking at, it says, notice at the end it says, let them kill the sacrifice. Let them kill the sacrifice. And what, they're, what the people were saying, was, uh, look, we got a we got a, a a year we could rest, but guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna have a good year. We're gonna we're gonna go out. We're gonna plant. We're gonna get a good year going. We're gonna have more cattle. And guess what? We're gonna do. We're gonna worship the Lord better. We're not gonna listen to him. We're gonna worship him better because we know a little bit better than him. I swear, I'm telling you, most people think the Lord's a dope. I swear, we do. We sin. We think he's a dope. Like he can't see us. He sees it all. Like we're going to get away with something. Amen. How many people think they're getting away with something? <laughs> At first you do, but then guess what? That reality hits, doesn't it? And you're down on your knees doing what? Confessing and saying, I'm sorry. Amen? That's that reality check that comes in. Okay? But they thought like that. We're no, we'll worship better. I, mean, I You know, we'll have more to worship. But that isn't what the Lord desires. When was in the Bible? Remember Saul? Uh, he, I mean, Saul walked up to him. Saul, Samuel, he says, look what we did. Well, uh, blessing of the Lord. Uh, you know, and Samuel says what? He says, I, I mean, you, you've broken the rules here. You're not supposed to do the sacrifice. What did he say? You're rebellious, didn't he? He said the Lord would rather have obedience than what? Sacrifice. It's better to obey than to have sacrifice. You know what the Lord wanted to say? He said it like this. If you were doing the right thing, you wouldn't have to put a sacrifice up. Basically, if you did the right thing, there's no need for it, right? So that's what he's looking at. He said, you have some, uh, you have some things here. Now, uh, what's happening with them, and you'll notice it as we were coming down, is this city, Ariel, needs chastening. God's children are chastened. Amen? Uh, God's children, judgment isn't for God's children. Chastening is for God's children. Okay? You got judged when? When did you get judged? You got judged at Calvary, right? Uh, when you go up to the judgment seat of Christ, it's not like you're being judged for your salvation or anything like that. It's going to be for what you did while you were in your body. But you're still saved. Amen? You're being... you. You people today, right here, the brethren, right here, the church people that are saved, guess what? You're being chastened. At times, I see it. I've watched some of you get chastened. I've actually had to, did, I wanted to comfort, wanted to give advice, but sometimes you got to understand, when you see somebody being chastened a little, sometimes you got to put your hands back and go, well, you, you got to go through it. you got to get, you know, it's sometimes, you ever hear you uh, take your medicine? <laughs> Amen? Chastening is times there's it's like good medicine for you. Amen. So in verse number, then in verse number two it says, Yet I will I'll distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. What's that? You don't think the Lord hurts too? Now do you see it, Miss Mary? I kind of confused you at first, didn't it? But now you see it. What's that? Well, you say it, it doesn't feel good to beat your kids. The same with the Lord. He doesn't want to do it. He has to because you need to be disciplined. But he says, I I'm going to feel just like they feel, you know. Go to uh, Romans chapter 9. Paul 
gives an account of this. He says uh, in Romans chapter 9, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I, I could wish that myself were cursed for Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. You know, there's only I only know one other person that felt that way in the Bible, and that was Moses. I'm talking about people. What's that? I got good heaviness. Why? Well, they're going through it in nine. Romans 9, 10, and 11. The past of Israel is nine, right? He says, I feel heaviness for who? You know it's going to be about Israel. Why? He sees it going. It hurts him, too. Seeing them go through it, it hurts. Hey, how many people here uh, can are hurt because of what the church is going through right now? I mean, we've watched it probably in our lifetime. We have watched it fall. We saw a lot of good points of it. Back in the 60s and the 70s, when people got up, the, everything was closed. You went to church in the early 70s, too. Uh, people were in a community. It was a big thing to have the church. Uh, the community wanted to be part of our churches. Yeah. Now, all those other churches are fighting for the community to be, to be a part of the community. It shouldn't be that way. The, 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 even the local governments look at us like, ah, no big deal. They, when's the last time the mayor came in to try and even get votes here? He doesn't go to any of them. And if he does, he'll only go to the one that has a lot of people. He'll go to this one down the block here that, uh, that has the people that he can get that guy to support him. It's a shame, people. It's a shame. Yet, he says... It's, it shall be unto me as, as Ariel. And I will camp against thee round about and will lay siege against thee with a mount and I will raise forts against thee. Now, uh, who did that in 29 here? Uh, if he's talking about Ariel, which is Jerusalem, it comes when Babylon comes, doesn't it? That's what he's talking about. I will. Uh, you know, the Lord turns around and says, well, I, I, I'm the one that's lifting up my hand. I'm the one that's allowing Nebuchadnezzar to come in. And if I'm the one allowing this, guess what? He works for me. Even though he really, he's, he's evil, but yet the Lord lifts up his hand and he comes in. Okay, so the, it's, the Lord says, I, I will camp against thee. I will. Uh, the, you got to understand something. This is years and years and years and they were warned. The Jews were warned against this. Go over to uh, Jeremiah. Go over to Jeremiah 52. Jeremiah uh, 52. And we're talking about Zedekiah when he was one and 20 years old. He began to reign. And uh, go down to verse number four. It says, And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that who? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came. He and all his army against Jerusalem, <coughs> pitched against it, and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged under the eleventh year of King Nebuchadnezzar. Zedekiah. Do you realize how many times he actually did Jehoiakim? He had a he had a siege against him. Uh, Jeconiah had a siege against him, and then Zedekiah had a siege against him. That was three sieges against Jerusalem. And even after that, guess what? They still did not listen. You think they would get down on their hands and knees and and cry out to God, but they never did. Amen. Verse 4, And thou shalt be brought down, and shalt speak out of the ground, and shalt speak of the ground, and thy speech shall be low of the dust, and thy voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. That's confusing, isn't it? Uh, uh, well, I, I'm going to give you an easy one. One word. Archaeology. You ever read, there's books out there, one's called, uh, If the Stones Could Cry Out. 
You see, what happened is Jerusalem is probably one of the most uh, sieged and conquered cities. So every time it's conquered, they knocked everything down, then they rebuilt. Underneath Jerusalem, and archaeology is finding them, they go down, and guess what? They're finding tablets, and right where the Bible says it is. Do you realize that if you talk to a real archaeologist and you talk about the Bible, they'll tell you that thing's correct. Every one of the times that they have done it, it went by that Bible 100%. The last one, I think, was what? The tablet will be low for David. They found it, and it was all right there. You know what? Sometimes the dust cries out. Sometimes the dust. It cries out to us, too. Uh, we've had it last year. Tell me how many people didn't remember 1776 all last year. Yeah. Hey, when they tell you that they were going to come and get your guns, didn't you look there and say they tried that once before? What happened? We shot them. <laughs> Amen. The dust would cry out. And look what it says. It says, the voice shall be as one that has a familiar spirit. What's that? How about lost stories? Lost stories that come out of these things. They're familiar spirits. There's things of the world that are familiar spirits with them. These stories are world stories now. Amen? So he says, uh, moreover, verse 5, moreover the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chafe that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant, suddenly, thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and with great noise, with storm and tempest and the flaming of a devouring fire. And you just went 2,000 years into the future just then. And not even realizing it. What's that? Go to Matthew chapter 11, uh, 3. Matthew chapter 3. You don't think God can in one sentence go 2,000 years into the future? He knows it all. I think it's great that he looks at it from the beginning to the end. Not from the end to the beginning. God looks at the beginning to the end. He looks at Carol and he says, I know the choice you're going to make. That's how he knows you. You know what he's been doing for you? Oh, know what God does? He studies you. He studies you. That's how he knows what you're going to, what your, your decisions are going to be. And you think it's, you think it's surprising. But you do it to your kids. You know, I know, I know which one's going to be doing this. I know which one. You, you have put it. Uh, you uh, look. It's like this. You have kids. You give them a, a mission, and then you can look. And you got that one kid that likes to cut the corners, and then you got the one kid that goes directly by the book. It's usually the oldest. They go directly like this. Has to be done this way. I've always learned it that way. But it's always that young one that's always so rebellious that just, there's that one that just sits there too and waits for you to do it. You remember that, right? You tell you all your kids to pick up their toys and then you pick them up? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, look, people, I watch people out here and, I, and they make me laugh. People make me laugh. I watch things. This is off the record, but off the cuff, but this is the biggest laughter I get. I watched a person out here. Uh, they were out in the field, not, not here, but over the field. And they had, a, they had a ball and a stick. So they threw the ball, and the dog didn't do anything. So they ran out there and got the ball, brought it back. And then they kept doing it, throwing the ball, and the dog sat there. And they went and fetched it. I just sat there and all I could think of was you're playing fetch for the dog. Yeah, yeah. The dog's <laughs> job. <laughs> See people with little baggies picking up the stuff for their dog. Who's in charge here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen? Oh, <coughs> but we're going some years into the future right here and, and God brings it out in chapter uh, 3. He does it again. Look at um, in chapter 3. Go down to Oh, verse number 11. John's talking and he says, I indeed baptize you with what? Water. It was only what? 
It doesn't change the insides, does it? No. It's only water. There's too many people who are putting that in as a dispensational salvation. It's only water. Doesn't go and penetrate and make the soul revitalized. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost. And what's the last part? With and with fire. So you got a whole bunch of people out here that are waiting and trying to uh, be baptized with the baptism of fire out here. Do you understand what they're talking about when they say something like that? They have no idea what they're talking about. He's not talking, when they're baptized with fire, guess what? They're going down. He's going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost. 2,000 years, fire. You've got a lot of time after that. Actually, it's like 3,000 years or so. But people, you have to understand something. That's the gap that's in there that God places in there. And he says, look, I can do it. How about another play? What was that? Zechariah chapter 9, where he says he comes in. And then guess what? And then right next to it, the next next comma, there's 2,000 years of that comma. And it's, the, and it's the day of the Lord. One is when he comes in on Matthew 21 on the donkey, and then the next thing is the day of the Lord. It's just that fast. The God, God understands what he's talking about. Amen? That's why when the, um, once the, uh, once the, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, man. Ah, we'll go on. Look at first, in Matthew chapter 3, look at verse number 12 now. He says, Holy Ghost with fire, whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. Now watch. But he will burn up the chafe with what? Okay. Amen. You see where it is? Now, it's an A-B conversation. Anybody here understand A-B conversation? It was in Job. He was a perfect and an upright man. A, perfect be upright. What's that? A, he feared God. B, he eschewed evil. A, B, conversation. The Bible has dozens, thousands of them in the Bible. This happens to be one. What? He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with a fire, okay, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather up his wheat in the garner, A, with the Holy Ghost, A, What's the second one? But uh, we will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. B. That's an A-B conversation. Amen. Going back, that's what he talked about. He said, the, it, he said, moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like unto small dust, and the multitude of the terrible ones, they're not us, are they? Shall be as chafe that does what? Passeth away. Gets burned up. Yay. It shall be at an instant, suddenly. It's an eternal fire. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquakes. There you go. And great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of what? Devouring fire. Amen. Uh, verse number uh, seven. Uh, and, the, and the multitude of, the, of all the nations, not just one, all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and, and her munition and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. What's that? They're, they're not going to be around anymore. They're going to be like a dream. What happens with a dream? You remember it uh, real instantly and then as time goes on, what happens? By the next morning, usually you're like sitting there going, I had a dream last night. It was kind of like this, but I really don't get it. Okay, I really don't get it, but I know I had a dream, and I know this was like this, and uh, I like my wife's dream. She has dreams, and I'm telling you, I'm very exciting in her dreams. I've done everything wrong in them. <laughs> I, I live this, like, incredible life in her dreams. It's great. I'm going to use them for my stories from now on. <laughs> They're better than the ones I make up on myself. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, um... They're not going to be around anymore. 
It shall be even as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh. And his soul is what? Empty. Empty. And as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Now, I got to tell you, I, I had this, I used to be uh, working at a pizza shop. Now, at a pizza shop, when you work there and it gets to be uh, night, like about dinner time, usually about 5 o'clock to about 7 o'clock. Man, is it busy. You got deliveries coming in and out, you got pickups, you got people wanting things and everything else, and you're just sitting there and it's pizza after pizza after pizza. Now it's not like it was you like today. They didn't have no conveyor belt. They had blanchets and you put them in and you pulled them out. And we used to bring them in and put them out and we had ovens going the whole way and you'd bang, bang, back and forth. I used to be so tired in the in the summertime, they have no air conditioning, obviously. Right. You're in there and it's like a hundred degrees in there, and the sweat's coming off, and you got sweatpants so you don't drip anything on the food. And it's tiring. You get done the whole day on a Friday night, and you're like, ugh. So guess what happens when you go home? You're wired up and everything, you go home and you sleep, and you don't get that great night's sleep. And what happens is you dream. I gotta tell you what my dream was. My dream was I was working with pizzas. I was dreaming about pizza. I'd get up in the morning, you know what I was? I was tired, I just did eight hours in my sleep. <laughs> That's kind of like this is. What, it, 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 even when a hungry man dreameth, and he behold, he eateth. But he awaketh and his soul is empty. It's like it didn't even, it, it didn't happen, his soul's empty. It, it, or when a, a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, he drinketh and dream, but he awaketh, and behold, he's faint. He, he, he's not satisfied with that. The soul hath, and his soul hath appetite, so shall the multitude of all the nations be. They, they, they think they're doing these things. It's like a, a dream world. They think they're doing it, and guess what? They ain't doing it at all. I, I bet you right now, there's people right now that think we're okay with Israel. Am I right? Probably most of them. They think we're all right with it. Hey, hey, there's people out there that think uh, Joe Biden's the answer to, to everything. I mean, that guy isn't even alive. I don't even know if he's alive. <laughs> we're the laughing stock of the world right now. You know, do you realize that we're the only, if you watch other uh, countries' uh, news, their leaders actually say our elections were fixed. We're the only ones that say it wasn't. You put on Australian news, they tell you, hey, America, yeah. look at America, they just went through a fixed election. They got a fake, illegitimate president. They say it right on the TV. <laughs> We're about the only ones that don't. What? And we got people that actually believe this tripe. Unbelievable. What's this? The rest of the world's smart and we're stupid. Unbelievable things that are happening. <laughs> Let's start in verse number nine before I go on a tangent. He said, stay yourself in wonder. Cry ye out. And cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. The rulers, they, they, they drink, they, they're not drinking, but it's like they are. Uh, what's happening is they're not drunk by booze. Okay? Uh, it's like that's how they're handling the Word of God. That's how they're handling what God said. Okay, they're staggering through it. They're, they're going through it like a, a drunkard. What's that? Jesus said it. He said, blind guides, rulers of the blind, blind guides leading the blind. He said, the, the rulers, they, they've become blind and they're leading the blind in this. And he, and he says, um, your leaders, are, they're spiritually, they're not there. Verse number 10, for the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes the prophets the prophets and your rulers the seers hath he covered and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned he went to school saying read this I pray thee and he saith I cannot for it is sealed. 
That's spiritual blindness that has happened. Uh, let's go look at some place. I'll show you how this kind of happens. How spiritual blindness, just so you know, this can happen to you. Amen. This can happen to you. I'll give you, for instance, put God in a box and realize and make it so God can't do it. I'll give you one. Could God actually preserve his word in one book, in, in, in the one you have in your hand? Could God possibly have given you that book that's in your hand? And they say, well, no, of course he couldn't. God can do everything, but there's one thing God can't do. He cannot provide you with a perfect Bible. That's what they say today, isn't it? That's what they've told you. Hey, have you ever heard those guys preach now? How they doing? They're all messed up. It's like they're walking. They don't even know how to. Then they start correcting God. God didn't really say that. He said this. I said it in Greek. He said this to me. You know what they're doing? They're grabbing the Greek lexicon. And they go in and they take a word. And they go and they pick the word they like. It's their opinion. It's a mess. I, I, I'd love to see when God gets it. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Uh, go over to Isaiah chapter uh, 6. Isaiah chapter 6. You remember this guy. His name is Isaiah. What happened to Isaiah? Isaiah actually saw things. It says uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 6, he gets a heavenly picture. He says in the first year of Uzziah, uh, that, that King Uzziah, Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high lifted up and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, uh, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts and the whole earth is full of his glory. He sees this. You know what he says when he, he sees the heavenly look. He gets the upward look. When you get the upward look, you know what next is? You're going to see yourself. What did he say? Woe is me. Look at verse number 5. This is what he saw, and then what did he say? Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am, I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen uh, the king. When you see something like that, things start to happen in your life. Go down to uh, verse number uh, 9, he says, uh, and he said, Go and tell this people. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their ears, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Uh, you notice how he, he brings that up, and he's talking about spiritual uh, blindness here, and he's talking to them, and he says, uh, Here indeed, this is, this is what I'm looking for, but guess what? Go tell the people. Go tell the people. But what do you think happened? They didn't want to hear, did they? No. They didn't want to hear at that time. They didn't want something, anything to do with it at that time. Uh, go to John chapter 12. They got a good look. Hey, look, you got a good look of things. How many here have been in the, here long enough to know that we preach that the King James is the word of God? Amen. You've gotten the truth. You walk out of here, you'll, I had a guy, I have guys that say, you guys are a bunch of idolaters of the Bible. Amen. Praise thy word. Hello. Did you not read it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's a dummy. <coughs> God says, I magnify my word above all my name. name. They're all worshiping the name of Jesus, aren't they? What's wrong with his word? In the beginning was the what? Word. The word was with God and the word was God. Amen. Amen. Go over to uh, 35. 35. It says that, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Okay, walk. While ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light. And while ye may be the children of 
that ye, be, ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed, and, and he did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, look what it says, yet they believed not on him. They got the word, didn't they? Yeah. They saw the confirmation in the, in the miracles, didn't they? And what happened? Yet they did what? Believed not on him. If you've gotten it, you've been given it, uh, people been bringing it out, guess what? You don't want to believe? You'll get some spiritual blindness, won't you? God gave you a book, and there they go. I, I tell you what, I've watched these guys. I've watched them left, right, up, and down. They get the book. Uh, I, I can tell you, guys like, I'm not going to mention, I'm sorry. Power, these big Christians, they talk about, the, they use the King James, but then they turn around and they were saying in the 70s, well, it's not the closest thing. We got these other manuscripts, they're closer to the Bible. They're older and they're closer. And they talk people out of the Bible, but yet they were using the book. You know what they like? The power. They like the power of the book, but you know what they don't like? The authority of it. It, 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 look, you, do you believe this book? Amen. You know what God says? Do what it tells you. Amen. That's what he's telling you. See, this is the thing. They, they, they like the power of the book, and they like what the book, the, 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 the results they're getting. People are getting saved. But they themselves don't want to do anything. They don't want to hear. They don't want to listen. They don't like the authority of the book. What it becomes is it becomes sealed to them after a while. And then if you turn around and you don't think the book is anything, and there's a whole lot that did that, what happened? They went into what? Apostasy. The book is like sealed to them now. They, it's like going to Revelation and they start talking. You're sitting there going, did you really read it? Did you really read it? If, look, Brother Larry, if you went to a church right now where the guy doesn't believe the book, you understand that you, you're listening to a guy and you know more than he does. You're sitting there going, he doesn't know. What is this guy doing up there? Stand, sit down. It's, it's nerve-wracking. Because they don't even understand the Bible. Look, we've gotten it to the day. They don't understand the Bible so much. They, they don't build upon the others. We, I built upon somebody else's foundation. What's that? Somebody told me I built upon their foundation. They've been doing it for years. And now all of a sudden, there's some new thing that somebody comes out and says, what, there's a three and a half year tribulation. Uh, now we're going to go through the tribulation. Uh, what's that? That's all stupidity. Yeah. What happened? You happened. That's what happened. You happened. Amen? You built upon nothing. And, and uh, go further with John. Stay in John and John chapter 12. He said they believe not on him. Look at verse 30, 38. This is where it comes in. He says uh, that the saying of Isaiah, what book are we in? Isaiah, Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? Who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. Why? Because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Who had believed his report? Uh, you, can, you can all put up your hand. You believed the report. He wants to know. Who hath believed his report? I did. I believed it. That's what God's looking for. Who would have believed? I, I, there's a lot of people that don't believe the report. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and what's come, what's, because they don't believe his report, educated people see the book and it becomes sealed unto him like they're in a the dream. They pick up the Bible and they can't even figure it out anymore. They're sitting in there and it's like, oh, it's just too deep for me. You just can't get it. It's just too deep. Why don't you just read it? A little here, a little there. Who should be teaching these things? Them that are drawn from the milk, he said in the last chapter. I'm not going to do it to a bunch of stammering fools that are a bunch of drunks. And he wasn't talking, to, he doesn't need to talk about booze. They're drunk the way they handle the Word of God. Amen. Stammering and 
and, and moving around. You see the preachers. They don't know what they're talking about and they're talking and, and they're confused and you're sitting there going, you're trying to confuse me. There's a guy up there and he starts correcting the book. I know this Greek and this Greek. He doesn't know any Greek. He just says it. So he just gets some things out. You know what? And I, I tell you, it's like this. He keeps correcting and people in the pews, they have lost confidence in the book and they say, what? Well, I guess the book isn't really reliable. He's correcting it. Seems like he knows what he's doing. I'll just come in here and listen to him for an hour and that's it. And guess what that? That becomes church. Just go, so, let's go see the preacher. He knows what he's talking about. I'm going to tell you something. I don't. The book knows what it's talking about. Amen. Amen? He says it's like it's sealed. Then you got another guy. It says, and, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned. That is not learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, what? I, I'm not learned. I didn't go to school. Hold on, I, I didn't go to Bible school. I, I don't really uh, know this stuff, you know? This blindness, you got to understand something. Blindness is willful. Blindness is wolf, willful. You got to, you want to be blind. Because if you want to open up your eyes, believe the book and believe what God said. Amen? Yeah. There's a lot of difference between a guy that gets up, doesn't believe the book, and just preaches some message that probably somebody else gave the, he got off the internet, than somebody that believes the book and gets up there and preaches. There's a whole lot of difference. Amen. Now from 13, he's gonna, what he's going to do is going to divide things up for the rest of the chapter between two different people. Uh, one people he's going to call a hypocrite and the other he's going to call meek. And how he's going to deal with them. Okay? Um, he says, he says uh, verse 13, Wherefore the Lord said, Therefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their what? with their mouth and with their lips to honor me but have removed their heart far from me their fear toward me is is taught by the precept of men therefore behold I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent men shall be hid. Hid, hid where? From them. What is this talking about? It's talking about um, something that Jesus actually uh, brought up. He said, their, their lips, they're, they're far from me. He said, uh, their heart is far from me. Their fear toward me is, is taught by the precepts of men. What's that? Instead of the word, we're taking precepts of men. Go to Matthew chapter 15. And then we'll go to Mark chapter 7. Jesus dealt with this in detail. Matthew chapter 15. Verse number 8, he, he expresses this, watch. He says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their what? And honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Jesus said it. Yeah. Look, at the, look at the next verse number 9. But in vain they do worship me. In vain. It's empty. Their worship is empty. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of who? Man. The commandments of men. Amen. They teach the commandments of men. Go to Mark chapter 7. Now do you understand that part? Their heart is removed from me. They go to the yeah. precepts of men. What's that? They're teaching traditions of men. Yeah. Mark chapter 7. The Lord dealt with this one day, just went out to get something to eat. And he dealt with this. Look at, let's start in verse number uh, 5. It says, Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders? 
but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you what? So what do you think we're going to be talking about? These first group. It's hypocrites. He says, you hypocrites right here. He says, now watch out why he's talking about them. He calls them hypocrites. He says, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Amen? Amen. What's this? For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the traditions of men. As the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. You'll walk away from God's law, and you'll keep your own traditions. Yeah. That's what he's turning around and saying. Why? That's what they were doing. Hey, give a gift to the church so you don't have to take care of your parents when they get old. You see, they didn't have no social security back then. Right. So they... They, had, they waited like as a person got older, they had to worry about their family. It, it's Look, it's it's uh, it's kind of like the Amish. They get certain age and the father says, that's it, he has to retire. Guess what? Everybody takes care of him. Right. The rest of the family, they take care of the father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what he's talking. You don't take care of the father. Why? Because you gave the church the gift. What it really happened is they gave church part of the gift and they kept the rest for who? Themselves. Yeah. They kept the rest for themselves. Yeah, they say, well, look at a good guy. Huh? And Ananias and Sapphira. And they kept a part back for themselves. Amen? But they talk like they give it out. Oh, yes, sir, we're all good. They do it by the precepts of men instead of the word of God. Uh, he said, therefore, behold, I will proceed to do marvelous work among among this people. Even a, a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men uh, shall be hid from them. Woe unto them that seek uh, deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. And shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. Okay, what's happening? That as the leaders, as their leaders are getting excelled, they excel higher and higher and higher, uh, guess what? They start to have what we call secret committees. You ever see that, secret committees? And just so you know, it's happening in the church today. What's that? I need to talk to you. We need to go out. We need to talk. You get to the, they go out to two people, a couple people in the church. They go out and they start discussing how they're going to move the church. We're going to do it this way. Look, I'm going to tell you something. It's, it's pretty much cut and dry. It, it's pretty much cut and dry. What's that? You go out, you witness, you advance, do a work of an evangelist. If people want to come in, God will give you the increase and they'll bring them in, right? That's how it's always been. Well, we need to make a committee. You know, just in case. Oh, you know, we have to protect the church. We need to have a committee. I've heard it before. Well, who, who are you to protect the church? I thought it was God's church. Amen. Don't do something stupid. You don't want to have to worry about it. Look, I don't have to worry about it. What do you think? Somebody's going to come in and take the book? Is that going to you think that's really going to happen? Hey, somebody come in. We're going to change it. We're going, we're going to go with the new King James now. I can guarantee you this place right now would be empty. Immediately right now, wouldn't it? The preacher would be preaching to his wife. Tonight. Why? You're not going to put up with it. Amen. What's a secret committee? But that's what they do. They're going to have a secret committee. Midnight meetings, getting together to push Obamacare. Don't read it. People, that's what they did. Yeah, that's right. They had pages of it. Nobody read it. They did it at night time, in the night at midnight. Why? In the secret committees. As people get higher and higher, they do things in secret, and they think they're helping you, they're hurting you, they're doing it in secret because they're evil. Yeah, that's right. When you, when you want something, you do it in the light. You do it in the daytime, and you do it in the light. The light is the truth. 
Stop with the meetings at night time. No secret societies. No secret associations. Amen. 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 Let's look at some word, man. Let's go to Psalm 64. Psalm 64, uh, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in what? Secret at the who? At the perfect. You know, you know, Jesus Christ, uh, they were in a secret room. They had a secret meeting that night. And he, the funny part is he knew about it. And he didn't even leave town. He knew they were doing it, conspired against town, even said it. And, he, and you know what? He never left town. He stood right there. He didn't do anything in secret. Okay? It says, uh, verse, the last part, it says, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? Who's going to see us here? Who's, who, who's the one that's going to see us? Go over to John chapter 18. John 18. Then we'll be going back to Luke. John 18. Look down at, uh, we'll start in verse number 19. He says, The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly. I spoke openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said what? Nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Didn't he just answer him? Yeah. He didn't hide anything. He put everything in the open. Go to Luke, um, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. First two verses. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, uh, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Why is that? For there is nothing covered that should not be revealed, neither hid that shall be not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which is spoke in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Go back to uh, 29 in Isaiah. What's that tell you? Hey, look, nothing's hid. You know, when these guys turn around, you got these Mormons running around here saying there were discs hid. Oh, well, we found some discs in New York. Who cares? The Word of God isn't hid. Oh, wow, well, God hid some discs in a the cave. They're called the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. I don't want them. Why? They're dead. They're dead. Why would, why would they be there? If, if, they were, if they were important, if they were God's word, they'd be in your hand. Look, if you had to do Hebrew and you had to do Greek, that guess what? God would make sure you knew Hebrew and Greek right now, wouldn't he? 
What a mess. What a mess these guys have turned themselves uh, into. Uh, you know, it, it's something, I, 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 for a person who is Greek, you see, I, you know, it's funny for me, the Greek freaks. I watch these guys, they're the Greek freaks to me. Oh, I know, you don't know any Greek. You haven't seen one manuscript, I haven't seen nothing. You're no, no way. Alexandria, nothing. You either take this book by faith or you don't take it by faith. You either believe God or you don't believe God. You have no idea and you're repeating something somebody else said. That's your say. You've done no research. How many people here have gotten it, scratched off a little of the ink and all that stuff, put it, to, put it together, put it under a microscope and looked at it? None of us, have we? We had no idea. We don't know anything about it. Get on your hands and knees and ask God. Amen. If God tells you it's his book, which he will, believe it. Amen. It was from God. And nobody will ever take that Bible away from you ever again. You'll take it into eternity. Hey, look, there's one thing I, if there's one thing I want to get across to everybody. When you stand before God, he says, what did you do with, your, with my book? You can turn around and say, I had your book, Lord, and I kept it, and I believed it. Amen? I sent that short, bald-headed, big-nosed guy down there to yell about that book all the time till you got it. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. First, uh, go back to 29. He says, uh, surely, uh, verse 17, uh, is it not yet a, a little, a very little while and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a, as a forest. Now, God turns around. He says something that kills me. Uh, this is years later, and he calls it a short time. Why? God lives in eternity. Time means really not that much to him. This is a little while. I mean, uh, one of the things that's always caught me is how the Lord turns around and talks about eternity. He says, uh, a day is but a thousand years unto the Lord. That's a day on earth. It's like a thousand years to him. A, 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 a thousand years is like a day to the Lord on the earth, right? But he says something else in that psalm in 90 where, when uh, through Moses he says what? And as a watch in the night, four hours. And he's trying to explain that's what eternity is like. What? It's like uh, a thousand years is like four hours. He's trying to explain it to you. It's like four hours. So that means that if you were to die right now, you'd be like right into the rapture. I mean, a person that died somewhere in the area of a thousand years ago uh, would be about, what, four hours? Four hours if they were saved. They've been only up there for four hours. That's big stuff, man. When you read, that's deep. When you read the Word of God, that it goes like that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Gotta love God for showing those things. But Lebanon... Uh, is, was, it was desolate at this time, at this now time, it was desolate. And what he's saying is, it will be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. A field as a forest, what's that? It's going to expand, people. He's going to expand it. Uh, now, he dealt with the hypocrite right there, didn't he? He dealt with the hypocrite. Now he's going to deal with the meat. This is the division from here to verse 24, and he says... And in that day, this is the millennium now. Remember, millennium is a thousand years, thousand year millennium. He's dealing with that now. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. You know what God's trying to tell you is, hey, look, remember them secret councils? Remember all those other things? I'm going to lift the curtain on them, and you're going to see the Wizard of Oz. He's just some guy sitting behind it. Amen? I'm going to lift the curtain on all this stuff for the meat. They're going to get to see. Uh, he, he, they're gonna, I'm going to lift the curtain on these secret committees. You'll see it all. He says, uh, verse 19, The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice. How? In the Holy One. Of Israel for the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for an, for uh, iniquity are cut off they're eliminated there's going to be a time when they're all eliminated look uh, go forward to Isaiah 40 Isaiah 40 We'll start in uh, one verse first. Uh, verse 18. To, to whom then 
will you liken God? What a good question. Hey, hey, hey Brother Dave, who are you going to liken God to? Absolutely nobody. <laughs> How do you liken him? You know, I, I love the part where God says, I looked around to see if I could compare, to compare anybody for my comparison. And you know what he said? I found nothing. So I have to compare it to myself. That's God. Nobody's like him. Amen? Amen? He says, to whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? And then you got some guy putting a, a fish as God. Yeah. He likened God unto a fish. That's how terrible that could be. Look down at verse number, um, let's go down to 20, uh, mm, let's go to 22. He says, is it he that sitteth on the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof? are as grasshoppers, amen, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as what? Vanity, as like they're empty. That's the Lord you got. He's going to bring the enemy. He's going to bring the terrible one and all his people that work with him. He's going to bring them to naught. Goodbye. Eliminate it. That's it. Don't need you no more. I'm working. I got the meek out there. I got people just believe me straight out. I, I, he says in 20, back in, back in um, uh, 29, verse 21, he says that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. I'm going to get rid of I'm not going to deal with these people anymore. I've been having a problem with these teachers for a long time. You know uh, You know what? I really, God's got, God's got to get gets to the time where he's upset. Imagine you've been sitting there for 10 years listening to some bozo preach the Bible who can't even preach and you, you've got no other church to go to because that's the only one in the area and you know it's one uh, sub church rather than no church. I gotta be at church on Sunday, and then you walk in, you got Bozo the Clown up there. You still got Bozo the Clown up up there. He just uh, has the right book. <laughs> Amen. Look at what's starting verse 22 again. He says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed. Neither shall his face now wax a pale. This is not going to happen, he says. Look, these are not going to happen anymore. You know what he's talking about right there? He says, uh, no blush. There's not going to be any blush, okay? Uh, you get blushful when you when you when somebody says something that makes, you know, ooh, okay? But he's saying there, there it won't happen that they become pale. What's that? Uh, like when you see a ghost, they say? He got white, white face to, like he had seen a ghost. He says, guess what? That's not going to happen anymore. That's not going to happen in the millennium. That's not going to happen to my people anymore. That's what he's talking about. He says, but when he seeth his children, who is his children? They're the children of what? Faith. Abraham believed God. And what happened to him? Grace. Grace is eternal, people. Stop listening to these commentaries that tell you it's not. Guess what? Abraham was saved by what? Believe in what God said. Like it or not, that's how he was saved. He got grace. Grace goes into eternity. Amen? And if it's God giving you grace, Noah found what? Grace. By what? Believe in what God said. That's what it's always going to come down to. Amen? You either believe God or you don't believe God. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of them, they shall do what? Sanctify my name. This is the meek. And sanctify the Holy One of Jacob. And shall fear the God of Israel, the saved. You know, uh, I don't want you to look at the priest anymore. I don't want you to look at these guys. I don't want you to look at the preacher anymore. Who do you, I want you to look at me, God's saying. I want my people, the people of faith, I, won't, I don't want you to look towards other men. Other men will fall, and you fall right on their face. He goes, I want you to look towards me. There's people of faith now. Verse 24. They also that have erred in spirit, what's going to happen? Shall come to understanding. 
And they that murmured shall learn what? Doctrine. Go to Isaiah chapter 2. He brought this up in Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, the word of the Lord that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow uh, unto uh, it. God's, Mount Zion is going to be the highest place on earth in the millennium. God's going to melt all the mountains around. I don't care if it's Everest. Mount Zion is going to be the highest mountain on earth. Amen. That's what he's telling about. Mm -hmm. he's, that's where the worship is. Uh, verse number three, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of ja Jacob, and he will teach us of what? His Wait. ways. And we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from uh, Jerusalem. I don't want you to listen to the preach. I got the word of God here. Uh, he says what? In the millennium, this is the way it's going to be. Those people that were murmured, they're going to learn doctrine. You know, right now, many of you are confused. You know why you're confused? You got some bad leaders in there. Yeah. I've put some, I, 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 the leaders got in there, but as they went higher, they started getting secret committees and all this other stuff, and they've been confusing you. But you've been faithful, and you're sitting in there, and you've still been faithful, listening to this and, and doing what God said. The whole time, even though there's confusion about, but God says, guess what? There's coming a day when that's not going to be. You're not going to have the confused leaders anymore, okay? In that day, I'm going to pick the leaders, God said, and when I pick the leaders, they're going to speak my word. And they're going to learn my word. Guess what? What you know today, even if it's 5% of the Bible, guess what? During the millennium, think about how much you're going to pick up at that time. You're going to have 100% of your brain power. You're going to be able to remember. It's going to be like photographic type memory. There's not going to be all this mess of the uh, blood going through your brain that's messing it up. In fact, you're not going to have any blood. To mess it up. Amen. Flesh and blood don't get in. Amen. Amen. Job said, I will see God in my flesh. So your flesh is going through, but your blood ain't going in. That's the stuff that's killing us. It's been killing us since the garden. And as time goes on, more tainted and more tainted and more tainted as it went along. And guess what? Soon it's going to be on the ground. And we're going up. Yes. Well, what about the people down here? Who cares? I'm going to Jesus, man. That's right. That's the hallelujah. People think, well, I'm so worried about everybody. I'm not anymore. Yeah, that's time to worry about Christ. And he's nothing to worry about because he's got everything right. Right. Look, the trouble is all over. <laughs> I mean, the, the day of the rapture, you do realize that you don't have to pay any bills anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> the day of the rapture, you don't have to get into an argument anymore. No more of that stuff. Guess what? We'll all be one mind. Yep. Thinking about Him. That's right. This is a great day. I mean, i got to tell you something. You know what the Bible says? It talks about the rapture in, in Thessalonians. Go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We went in there today, weren't we? Yep. I don't know if you picked it up, but you should have. I'll read it again just so we can pick it up. He says, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that went on before us, 
They're asleep. They're not dead. That ye sorrow not. What, what did he, wait a second, what did he just say? You don't sorrow not. They're not, they're not gone. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What's that mean? They're still alive. They're still alive. He says, of others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's us, right? Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh, guess what's happening? He's bringing them back. I got all the souls with me. They're coming back with me. Hey Amen. I, I know now what's going to happen. I don't have to be worried about my mom no more. Amen. God figures that out for me and tells me. Verse number 15, for this we say unto you by what? The word of the Lord, not by men's words. <coughs> Care less about what they say. Well, I read the sword of the Lord. And they said, who cares? He says, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then... We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Did you notice it says we're going with that? We're going to be gathered with them. You all thought you were being gathered with the Lord. No, he didn't say that. We're going to be gathered with them. And then what? Then we're going to meet the Lord. How? As one people. As one bride, as one people, we're going to meet the Lord. Amen? Amen. How? In the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And guess what? It's this next verse. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. Stop talking. We don't need to talk. Hey, we're getting out of here soon. Hey, we're getting out of here soon. I'm comforting you, but you don't have to worry. We're getting out of here soon. There's nothing to worry about. There is absolutely nothing to worry about. The only thing that this that this world can do is destroy your body. Can't destroy your soul. God's got that. Yes. Thank the Lord. Amen. That's right. He's perfect. He did it. He got it all over with. Man, my back hurts, but I don't care. I want to praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So what are we all worried about? You see how God deals with the learned, the meek, mm -hmm. and all that. Hey, look, the hypocrites. Bye bye. No more. I will go. The meek will inherit the earth. The poor in spirit. What's that? The saved. The people of faith. Yeah. We don't need it great right now. We just need, we're just going to survive. But when God comes back and the Lord takes us up, guess what? You can pay my bills because I don't care. That's right. <laughs> What's going to happen with my cars? You can have them. Everybody can have everything. Well, I don't care. I care about one thing and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? 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 Let's pray. <laughs> Father, thank you, Lord God, for good preaching tonight, Lord Father. Yes. I wasn't bored at all. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord God, for talking to us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for uh, letting us know, Lord, you're going to have some good teachers for us. Lord Father, thank you, Lord, that you're going to open this book for us, it says. You're going to take the, take the, uh, what, the, what's keeping us away from learning it so much is, is not going to be there, Lord. You're going to teach us personally. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us like that, man. It's, you're, you're just fabulous. Thank you, Lord God, that you died on the cross. and you, We got some hope now. And our hope is in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the rapture, man. Time to go soon, Lord. I want to leave. I want to be out of here. I don't want to stay around. I just want to go, Lord. I'm tired. I thank you for Isaiah 29 showing us what happened with leaders and, and how we can actually be spiritually blind by not believing thy word, Lord Father, and what thou hast done for us. Thank you, Lord, that we believe the report. We took it upon our, we took it, we took it to our hearts, Lord God. We kept thy word, Lord Father. We're here at Bible Baptist Church, Lord Father. We kept thy word, Lord. Until the end, we're going to keep it. It's going to be, it's going to be in our bosom, Lord, and then soon it'll be in our heads. Thank you, Lord. It'll be in our hearts. Love you, Lord. 
Let's go in peace and have a good night, good sleep, a good peaceful sleep in the Lord, as you said. We thank you, Lord, for giving us that. We love you. Thank you for the blessings of the day. And thank you, Lord, for the answered prayers. In all things, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.